what's up guys in this video i'll be showing you a few user tips and tricks to make the most out of your galaxy a13 5g now these are in no particular order so make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss a tip or a trick you might need when using this phone so first up is how to hide applications now if you want to hide applications on this phone all you need to do is go to the home screen settings you can do that by going to the app drawer and on the search bar, tap on the three dots right there and then go to settings. Alternatively, you can go to settings and then go to home screen and you'll still land on the home screen settings page. Now here, tap on hide apps and then select the apps you want to hide. So for instance, if I want to hide my Facebook app, I'll tap on that and it's going to be added to the hidden apps list. And then make sure you tap on done at the bottom of the screen. And from there, now when you go to the app drawer, you'll find that Facebook is missing. The app is still on the phone, it's still active, but it's hidden from the app drawer and from the home screen. To unhide, simply follow the same process, go to home screen settings, go to hide apps, and then tap on the hidden app, and it's gonna go back to the unhidden apps or the visible apps, and then tap on done to save. And now when you go back, you should find your app right there. So you can use this for those apps you really need to hide on your phone. Next is screen recording. Now this phone unfortunately does not come with a native built-in screen recorder, but that doesn't mean you cannot record your screen. If you go to the Play Store and look for X Recorder, this is a very easy to use free ad supported application that you can use to record your screen. You don't even need to root your device for this. Simply go to the Play Store, install the application. With the app installed, launch it, and then go through the setup process. And after the setup process, you can now start recording the screen by tapping on the plus icon, go to record video, and you can choose whether to record your microphone as well. And that will start recording your screen. There's this little uh, floating menu here that you can use to either stop or continue with your screen recording. Now, it's currently recording everything I'm doing on my screen. And when I'm done, I'll tap on that. I can pause, I can stop. Now, like I mentioned, this is ad supported, so you might be seeing a few ads here and there. If you don't want to see ads, obviously, go ahead and pay for the app. And with that done, if you go back to the app, you should find your screen recordings there from where you can play, you can edit, and you can do anything you want. Also, you can find the screen recordings in your gallery. So if you go to gallery, albums, go to screen capture, you should find your screen recordings there. And that's basically how to record your screen on this phone. Now, X Recorder is only the app I like to use, but you can use any app you want. There are a couple of apps on the Play Store that you can use to record your screen. Next up is scrolling screenshots. Now, if you're on a scrollable page, for instance, on a web browser like this, that you can actually scroll, if you take a screenshot on such a page, you should find an extra icon right there. And if you tap on that, it's gonna help you scroll. And you can scroll as far as you want. And when you're done, just stop scrolling tap on the screenshot and now you can see your scrolling screenshot you can even expand you can edit you can share you can delete you can do whatever you want to do with that scrolling screenshot now still on the subject of screenshots you can choose to take screenshots without the status bar at the top and without these navigation buttons at the bottom and to do that simply go to settings under settings go to advanced features and then go to screenshots and then here you can choose to hide status and navigation bars when taking screenshots. So if you turn that on, now when you go ahead and take a screenshot, you should see the status bar and navigation bar at the bottom have not been captured. Next is edge panels. Now edge panels basically adds a little shortcut menu panel here that you can use to pin your favorite apps. And to enable that, simply go to settings on the settings page, go to display, tap on that. Under display, if you scroll down, you should find edge panels. So switch that on. And now if you go back to your home screen, you should find the edge panel right there. If you pull it out, it's gonna come out with your favorite shortcuts or with the AI chosen shortcuts. Of course, you can customize the edge panel and add applications you want and remove the ones you don't want until you're happy with your edge panel. 
I've made a whole video on edge panels so you can check it out down in the description below. The next thing is automatic brightness. Now this phone does not come with automatic brightness enabled by default. So you kind of have to adjust brightness manually depending on what lighting conditions you're in. But if you want, you can enable automatic brightness. To do that, go to settings and then go to display. Under display, go ahead and tap on adaptive brightness. If you turn that on, it means the brightness of this phone is going to be adaptive. Basically, that means it's going to adapt to the surrounding environment. And that, in simple terms, is called automatic brightness. Next up is developer options. Now, there are a couple of hidden features inside developer options on your phone. But before you can get inside developer options, you have to enable that particular feature. To do that, go to settings. Under settings, scroll all the way down to about phone, tap on that, and then go to software information, tap on that, and then go to build number. Now you want to tap on build number seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then it says developer mode has been turned on. If you have a pin or a pattern set up, you might be asked to verify using a pin or a pattern before developer options is enabled. Now, if you go back to the main settings page and scroll all the way down, you should find an extra option called developer options. So if you tap on that, so these are your developer options. And in here is where you can also find USB debugging for your phone. To turn it off, simply go to the top of the page and turn off developer options. Next up is default applications. Now you might have more than one browser more than one application that does the same thing. And it's important to know what your default applications are. For instance, if someone sends you a link via text message, if you tap on that link, you should be able to choose which browser will open that link by default. And to do that, simply go to settings. Under settings, scroll all the way down to apps. Tap on apps. And here you can see all the apps on your phone. Tap on choose default apps. So you can choose a default app for browser, the calling app, the phone app, the SMS app. For all these app categories, you can choose a default application. So for instance, if you go to browser, you can choose to have Chrome or the Samsung browser on your phone as the default browser. Next is how to use apps in split screen mode. Now to use apps in split screen, simply open one of the apps you want to use in split screen mode and then go to the multitasking window. So tap on that if you're using navigation bars. And then in the app icon at the top, tap on that and then choose open in split screen view. So that will open in split screen at the top. At the bottom, go ahead and choose a different application. I'll choose email for instance. And now, as you can see, I'm using two applications in split screen mode and I can even adjust the size of each of the applications in the shared screen in split screen mode. To exit split screen mode, simply swipe down or up and that will close one of the applications and leave the other one running in full screen mode. And that's basically how to use more than one application in split screen mode. Next up is pop-up mode. So this basically lets you have an application floating on your screen while you use the rest of the screen on your phone. So for instance, you can have an application like YouTube, maybe you're watching a video on the YouTube application. All you need to do is tap on the multitasking window and then go to the app you want to use in pop-up mode, that's YouTube. So tap on that and then select open in pop-up view. And that basically opens application in pop-up view as you can see. And you can even drag it exactly where you want on the screen. You can resize the pop-up window. You can even change the opacity or transparency of the video. So you can be able to see what's happening in the background. So you can have your video playing while you do other things on your phone using this pop-up view. And you can also control what's happening in the pop-up view window. That's basically how to use the pop-up view on the Galaxy A13. To exit, simply tap at the top there and tap on close, and that will close the pop-up view window. Next up is fast charging. Now this phone is capable of fast charging, but maybe the setting is not turned on and your phone might be charging slowly. So to check on that, simply go to settings. 
on the settings page you want to scroll to battery and device care tap on that and then tap on battery and then under battery you want to go to more battery settings tap on that and then here you should see that fast charging can be turned on or off currently it's off so if you switch that on you're going to enable fast charging on your phone and of course you'll get higher charging speeds next up is the side key now this side key on your galaxy a13 is used to switch your phone on or off and that's by long pressing the button so if i long press it brings up the power menu and i can use that to switch off my phone but also there's a function for double pressing the side key by default when you double press the side key it opens the camera application but of course you can customize that and have it open any application you want and to do that simply go to settings on the settings page go to advanced features and under advanced features tap on side key you can see it right there side key tap on that and then you can see by default it's a quick launch for the camera but you can tap open up and choose whatever app you want to open when you double press the side key for instance i'm gonna go ahead and select maps so it can open google maps and now when i double press the side key it's gonna open the application i chose and that's basically how to customize the side key next is dual messenger now this phone like many other samsung phones have the ability to duplicate messaging applications those are applications like whatsapp facebook messenger most of the messaging apps really and to enable that simply go to settings on the settings page go to advanced features and under advanced features scroll down to dual messenger so tap on that and now you can turn on dual messenger for the application you want to duplicate so for instance if you want to run two whatsapp accounts on your phone simply switch that on and tap on install and confirm and if you want to use separate contact list for the two applications you can turn that on but i'll leave it off and tap on next and confirm i want to use my regular contacts for both the main application and the duplicate application and with that done it confirms it's been turned on and now when i go to my app draw i should find my first whatsapp application and the second whatsapp application and i can use two different accounts on the two different apps next up is navigation gestures now as you can see by default on this phone you have buttons at the bottom to help you navigate around your phone so you have this for multitasking you have this for going back and you have this one for taking you back to the home screen now if you prefer to use gestures instead of these buttons you can switch it up by going to settings and then go to display under display you want to scroll down to navigation bar tap on that and then here as you can see buttons is selected but you can switch that to swipe gestures so turn that on and you should see the navigation buttons disappear and replaced with this little line now this is what we're going to use to do almost everything so for instance to go back home simply swipe up and release to go into multitasking mode simply swipe and hold it somewhere there and now you're in multitasking mode and to go back simply swipe from any corner of your screen from any application really you can swipe from the right or from the left and that will be your back button and that's basically how to use gestures instead of navigation buttons on your galaxy a13 lastly this is for people who want to use a screen protector on their phones now usually screen protectors will affect the touch sensitivity of your phone but samsung knows that and they've added a button to increase touch sensitivity especially if you're going to use a case on your phone so you can enable it before or after applying a screen protector go to settings under settings go to display under display you want to scroll down to touch sensitivity turn that on and now your touch screen is a little more sensitive than it was so even if you apply a screen protector to your phone everything is going to be smooth and buttery and those are the few tips and tricks for the galaxy a13 5g let me know down in the comment section if i left out anything but thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one